Podcast Show Reviews and Discussed Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Silver Queen. Dare you know my tale? It is not for the faint of heart. What is thy tale? Sky tale? Thy tale? Your tale? I, I, I'm trying to do something fancy. Oh, that. Well, you made me sound more like a, a Thai food dish, I think. Pad Thai. That sounds fun. What? <laughs> Also joining us today is Jacob. Hello, everybody. Whew, it's been a long time since we did this. And luckily, we don't have to bring out the booze just yet to help us get through what we're beginning today. Oh, man. You're the, you're the only ones we will be drinking because it'll be too stupidly early for silver and I don't drink. And it's 5 o'clock somewhere. <laughs> Funny enough, it's around 5 o'clock where Jacob is, I think. Well, it's 30 minutes to 5. Ah, it'll be 5 o'clock to England, England. Yes, it'll be 5 o'clock in England because England is one hour behind you. Yeah. Yeah, see, it'll be 5 o'clock in England. But anyway, in today's episode, we will be reviewing... Da, 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 My Little Pony, Tell Your Tale. Uh, tale, tale, yes, tale. Um, we'll be reviewing two. Um, one is Sister Take Flight and A uh, Home to Share. So, the, synopsis, the summary for... Um, uh, Sister Take Flight is <coughs> um, In Zephyr Height, Pip and Pip Petals and Zip Storm are packing their belongings to move into the Crystal Bright House in Maritime Bay. Yep, simple enough. And A Home to Share is Following the destruction of her lighthouse in My Little Pony and the Generation, Sunny Star Scout and her friends are moving into the newly built Crystal Bright House together. <clears throat> Alrighty then. So, I guess first impressions are in order. Silver, what do you think of those episodes? Well, this was the launch. Well, this was the launch of Tell Your Tales. So, kind of funny. It starts with <laughs> nobody knowing how to fly. Uh, a decent follow up to the st- to. The special that shows magic is back in Equestria, but not everybody knows what to do with it yet. And a fun comedy of errors. Though looking at it now from the vantage of multiple episodes and specials down the way, it's curious to think about Zip and her role as an heir apparent. Heir apparent? What do you mean? I believe that's the proper term. Let's see here. Well, she's the next in line to be the queen since she's the eldest. Yep. Ah, okay. Oh, okay. An heir whose claim cannot be set aside by the birth of another heir. Okay, so that's how you call it. All right, cool, 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 cool. And anything else as well? Mm, not yet. We must t- talk about the episode first. Right. And what about a uh, home to start? Uh, sorry, a home to share. Home to share. Oh, okay. We're we're doing both. Light speed. Home to Share, really fun song. I enjoy hearing that. I like uh, Sonny's moment of introspection, but at the same time, it also makes the cast look rather spastic. Yep, yep. I I can totally agree with those statements there. All right. And Jacob, what about you? Well, first off, I'm actually surprised that this series came out months before the official 3D one did, so I don't know if this was foreshadowing, foreshadowing of things to come, like... When this was originally announced, I saw how it looked and I was extremely skeptical about it. I mean, uh, I was already kind of worried by the movie being so modern with all the current year technology being in your face and especially with the one uh, where one of the main cast is doing it almost constantly and I sort of missed the fantasy adventure aspect of G4, Uh, but well, that's it. I mean, it was kind of irritating also because uh, Terry Terry was sort of getting off the Steven Universe vibes. Ah, I see. All right. But honestly, after such a long time, after watching the first and second episode, it, it wasn't so bad, honestly. All right. Um, what about A Home to Share? <laughs> I mean, pretty much what Silver said, like, everybody just start doing everything at, at random without... Uh, any form of coordination. Yeah, I, I I can also agree on that one too. Uh, boy, that that episode. 
And as for me, uh, Sister, Sister Take Flight is one of those episodes where it's just a setup for characters and whatnot. And it, it, it's, it just looks fun. But at the same time too, I can't, I can't really delve into much. But yeah, I'll just say it's fun. Um, a home to share, like Silver mentioned, the song is fun and catchy. But it reminds me of that one season nine song um, where, if I'm not mistaken, uh, it's a song about the main six kind of solving a escape room. Oh, yes, yeah, so where they're singing best friends until the end of time. Yes, that one. Sorry. And in the background, to, uh, what is Starlight is suffering because of Trixie. Oh, yes, also trying not to kill her. But no, no, I, I'm just remembering. It's not that one. It's the I'm not perfect. That's oh, we're not flawless. Yeah, we're, not flawless. we're works in yes, progress. That one. Oh, from oh the, that's from uh, what was it? Fame and misfortune. Yeah, that would be season eight, would it? Maybe. Let's see here. No, it's seven. Season seven. Flawless. Uh, I I just realized who the writer is. Yeah, he did not like writing that episode. Really now. No, he disavowed it. Oh, wow, really now? Yep. Huh. Because I kind of enjoyed it, but I, I can see... Oh, Emmy L- see... Larson. Yep. We're, to- we're yep. talking about Emmy Larson, but... Wow. I... Really now? I could see why, but... I I found it fun. Did he, did he ever explain why? If I recall... He didn't like something... the... Uh, you go, Silver. No, I've been I've been answering most of the questions. Jakob, you go. Well, uh, I'm sort of forgotten, but apparently uh, he didn't like the idea that, uh, well, considering what he what was what was written previously with the, what was the other one that was uh, all slice of life, uh, where, where the side character was put in the forefront. Um, uh, was it? Title? It's called slice of life. Yeah, <laughs> slice of life. Yes. True. Yeah, slice of life. <laughs> well, apparently he didn't like the the idea of uh, well the phantom being portrayed like so negatively, like it was in the fame of misfortune or something like that, if I recall. But do correct me if you've got a better uh, answer for that, Silver. Nope, I think you're spot on. He also didn't like uh, changing all of Ponyville to be so unpleasant. All right, because uh. I'm I'm on the wiki page and there's a link to a YouTube video from a Brony Can convention during 20, 2017. So yeah, but yeah, I, I can see why because when you look at it, it's a bit mean spirited to the fandom, like how fans are picking on the episode, saying this, saying that. It's basically like that Spike, uh, quick sh- uh, short comic for the. 10th anniversary? Remember that one? Oh yeah, I remember which one. Yeah, it, it's similar to that kind of vibe. So I, I, I can understand why he felt like it, it was meta, but not in the right way. But how did we get here? Oh yeah, I love the song, that's why. The song was the, the song here was <laughs> amazing. I, I love this song. That reminds me of the song in uh, Moving, whatever. But anywho, <laughs> if you guys have not watched, <laughs> give me a second to you can clearly tell that we love G4 more than G5. <laughs> oh, boys! <laughs> uh, okay, if you have not watched Sister Take Flight and uh, Home to Share, go do so. Uh, we'll wait. <coughs> Welcome back. So anyway, we start off the episode with Flash getting rammed by a construction pony. That's Flash. I don't care what you say, guys. Well, then he's he's endured the centuries very nicely. Yeah. But like, I can just imagine him saying, "Ah, oh, finally, I'm getting um my chance to shine." And oh, I'm a background pony now. Yay! <laughs> oh, poor Flash. But anywho, uh, we, as we start, we see Pip being a sushi baka. <laughs> yes, Pip being a baka. Uh, by trying to overstuff her luggage. Oh my goodness! Now, now that I, now that I know the content of the bag, if you take a look, see at the squashing of the bag, there's paws. Oh yeah, Queen's pet. 
Yep. I'm just gonna let that hang for a bit on the frame. There's pause. Anywho, we see her trying to pack pack up. If I could, uh, if you go a little further, you you see it's those are not pause. We're going to take animal abuse out of this concept. Mm -hmm. It appears to be some form of doily or lace. Yes. Um, I, I noticed that too. But uh, <laughs> you know what? I'm not even going to justify my, 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 my comments. Uh, they're dumb. Yes. Carrying on. So yeah, um, she's trying to overpack in the traditional funny way of, oh, how, how do I pack stuff? And Silver, please do tell me that do people really do this? But jump up and down to get their luggage closed? Not that I'm aware, unless they want to bust a perfectly good piece of luggage. I, at least force it down, because if I remember right, there is... I had a friend who did that once, and I'm just puzzling. We're only going for a short trip. What, why do you need to carry this much? Oh, boys. But that's that's me, I guess. So, anywho, um, she, try, she, she tries and packs and everything. Uh, Zip comes in saying, are you ready? And whatnot. And uh, comes to her during the Swantan bomb. Which kind of fails. And everything gets exploded. So we see that, okay. Um, Zip comes in and just says, okay, um, get, get your bag ready. And uh, Pip just says, bag? Points to the left, there's bags mountains of bags oh goodness me oh goodness my why does she have so much luggage uh, what's the minimum carry uh minimum luggage capacity for you to bring on a plane silver minimum yeah because there's carry on and there's one in the cargo so how heavy can you bring oh you you can bring up to 50 pounds, 50 pounds. oh man i wish i i wish i knew how much that in kilogram but yes um, I doubt she'll even pass that one. And anyway, um, after some hijinks, we are greeted to the parade where the queen wants to, uh, say goodbye to her daughters. And all the ponies there are very happy and pleasant to see. There's, uh, parade balloons of the queen and her two daughters. Funny enough, there's no king. I wonder where the king is. He got disney Oh, no. That's not good. Now that I think about it, Sonny's dad is disney Why? God damn it. Well, he probably got disney so that she could be paired with somebody else. I... If you catch my drift. Carrying on. So we see the parade. And there's balloons everywhere. And we, we see that, hey, um, the queen is kind of saying, oh, smile and wave. Uh, this parade is for you. And we see that Zip is very uncomfortable, but Pip is very into it. Um, waving to the crowds, taking pictures and whatnot. And when Pip wants to take a picture with Zip, she just hides. Like, she, she doesn't want to get her picture taken at all. She's kind of a private person, which is kind of different from our previous Pegasus. Who is a speedster? I I do like that. I do like that concept. I mean, technically, she's not a speedster. Either. I mean, true. But when you take a look, see at her overall design, her slick up hair, her wingspan and whatnot, she she looks like a speedster. Like she she is meant to go fast. But as we go on further with the episode, we we kind of found out that she likes science. And also is a detective. Kind of cool. But at the same time, she's never had to wrestle with being the heir. I feel like she spent so much time running away from it. She really needs an episode or two where she finds her resolve. And confronts the issue. Like, yes, um, I accept the responsibility and so on, blah, blah, blah. Or just like, you know what? No, probably no, no. Give it to Pip. She's much better at this end than I am. Now, Pip's good at receiving the uh, praise and adulation. Don't know about decisions. Oh, yeah, that's also true. Yeah, being popular doesn't make one a, a lead. Oh, yeah, that's also true. 
but but we'll we'll have to wait and see because the show is still young, so we'll have to wait and see how they move the her plot, her story plot for that. By the way, Silver, has there any been any mentions of Zip acknowledging that she'll be the heir? A few. A few. That's cool. All right, cool, 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 cool. Uh, that means there's potential for the show. Yay. In Tell Your Tale, or was it in uh, Make Your Mark? Well, both. All right, then. So, anywho, uh, as we carry on, uh, the parade continues to go on, and they just say, oh, come on, um, sister, take a picture. Uh, it's your big day and whatnot. And they arrive at the podium to have a little speech and whatnot, to have a speech where uh, we see that her mom posts baby pictures and from a young age, we see that Zip is very uncomfortable having her picture taken. Oh no. So much that she had to take one uh, when she was asleep. Oh yeah. Oh god. What was she doing to be so tired? <laughs> uh, she's embarrassed by it. Uh, Zip is embarrassed by it, yet Pip is kind of like absorbing it. Like, oh yes, this is my energy. Yes, ha ha ha. But um, the queen just says, okay, um, my daughters will be off somewhere to start their new life and uh, grow as ponies. To commemorate the event, I shall unveil a statue. Huzzah! And from that point on, hijinks ensue because a lot of ponies are clumsy. And... Well, not so much clumsy... It's just that you have to take into account that this is happening right after the movie. Like, it's easy to explain that the, par- the Pegasus are just flying around and could probably... Because uh, they've never once flown in their life. And they're still getting used to it. That is true, that is true. Um, and if you're confused with why and what what does Jacob, Jacob mean, uh, it's just that in the movie, the ponies here forgot how to fly. They, they don't have the magic to fly anymore. So they've been grounded. And in the lore for the movie, only the royals can fly. That's how they set it up. But there's actually wires. It's like stage magic. So with that, um, with, with the movie carrying on, uh, Sunny kind of got the magic back together again and now everybody has their magic back again um unicorn can use their horns for magic pegasi can use their wings to fly and earth pony somehow got more things than whatever Apple G- that and also whatever they, they had more things than what applejack had in her days for apple or any other earth pony but applejack <laughs> but anywho um shenanigans ensue a lot of hygiene happen and uh, it seems that things are settling down. Um, the, the one pony flew far, far high, so um, she'll be missed. But th- when the queen was about to finish her speech, it seems that oh no, one of the balloons popped and blew 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 air towards the royals, and making their hair kind of funny, or just yeah, funny. And you you see the queen kind of. Piss, but they, they, everybody laughed, had, had a good laugh about it, and uh, they took a photo to commemorate the moment. And with that, the girls take flight for Maritime Bay and start their new life. And I'm just going to end it there. You forgot the title drop. Oh boy, yes, the title drop at the end of that. So, Silver, I'm gonna ask you should we do a breakdown here or? Breakdown when we finish covering Home to Share. Uh, breakdown here, since they're two separate episodes. Oh, so, Silver, what do you think? Well, the pony who got uh, tied up to the balloon, we never see her being rescued. So that's concerning. Very concerning. I mean, even in the movie, that guy who was stuck to balloons for like three, four days a week, he came out okay. I'm hoping the other one did. Otherwise, there's a very, very overdue rescue op. But this is mostly the pomp and circumstance of a, of a royal departure and watching a comedy of errors unfold. 
That's what it breaks down to. An interesting launch to the series, but not like the heart and soul of it. Just a quick little... I view these Tell Your Tales as a little snack of storytelling. Low calorie, not not a lot of uh, overarching conflict, but just a quick little snippet of fun. So basically what you could equate to is kind of a meal starter before the main course. Something like that. An appetizer? Yeah, okay. Or just a midday, early morning snack. Yeah, or filler, if you're thinking about it in the anime sense. Well, who knows? Filler, the filler they never reference again. Mostly because it's more often r- wrong. Oh, the great tea race. Who can forget that? But yeah, I can see what you mean with that. Okay. Jacob, what about you? Well, uh, I'm not sure there can be much uh, much said about this. I mean, I mean, it was a fine episode, all in all. Maybe not the best start, but it is what it is. Yep, yep. I have to agree with you on that one there, too. And as for me... This episode here is... How, how would I put this? It's like what Silver mentioned. It's a comedy of errors where... It, yeah, it's a comedy of errors. But when when I really look at it, I, I feel like it's just mostly visual gags. Um, the, the story is pretty light on it where there's no much... There's, there's not much... What's the word I'm looking for? Threat or... What is a better word other than... Antagonist? Not antagonist, but... Conflict? Yeah, conflict. Thank you. There's not much conflict in the show, but uh, just but to be fair, this is just one of the first episodes, and also it's kind of a short five-minute thing, which I forgot to mention to you all. The show is just five minutes, and it's free on YouTube to watch, so that's amazing. And it's less mind-numbing than the other series. Which one would that be? Which Come on, be? Norman, say something. Which, which one would that be? Because um, the only mind-numbing one I remember that kind of like made me want to not watch the show anymore was <laughs> uh, Pony Life. Yes. Well, I was referring to G5. G5 is something that I haven't really seen properly, so I can't really judge that much. But Pony Life is the... Almost the straw that broke the camel's back for me. But anywho, yes. Um, so yeah. Uh, for for this one, um, it's just low threat, low conflict. Uh, on the other hand, I I do like the queen. Uh, it shows her in a nice light where even with all the shenanigans that happen, all the chaos that ensue, she took it with a smile, where she's pissed, angry, but. She laughs it off because, ha ha, uh, this is just silly, um, silly unforeseen events. Oh well, at least my daughters are here, and so on, blah blah blah. And that's nice. I I, I like that. I like that. Anyway, let's move on to the other one. The other one would be a home to share. So we did the first impressions. All right, let's hop right into it. Did we do the first impressions? I forgot. We did, right? Yes, we did. All right, thank you. So anyway, we, we jump up into the Maritime Bay where they discuss, ah, yes, our home to be. And Kaiju Crab comes in and destroys it. Episode ends. Yay. I never thought that would happen. Who knew a giant crab would be the season finale? Rarity. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes, I see. She was ready for this. And she will be hating her. Weak points for massive damage. Work, work, work. I wish it was. It would be, it would be a fun show. Time traveling rarity to stop giant crabs. But no, unfortunately, we, we won't get that story. Because this is a, just a diorama where uh, the crew are stating on what they want to do for the lighthouse. Uh, they have plans. They want to redecorate. They want to make things awesome because the five of them are going to live in it so they feel like they're going to renovate the place because they kind of destroy it so yay we're going to see how it goes Uh, sunny here just tells the girls all right cool girls um let's do this because this is going to be awesome wait i I say girls i'm used to that 
uh, let's go, fellas, because there's a guy in the group now. Uh, let's get this done. So as they, as she reveals the things that they're gonna do, everybody goes grabs in and does their own thing, and we get a nice song for the show. Um, as per usual, I'm just going to fast forward things because. Uh, things are really chaotic here. So we see that Zip here is doing the painting for the walls. Yes. And then we see she's doing an okay job. Uh, Easy here is also doing paintings for the wall, but a different shade of colors. And um, we see a hodgepodge of chaotic stuff. Um, Hitch here is trying to do IKEA stuff without the manual. And... We, as we all know, doing IKEA stuff without the manual is just a recipe for chaos, which it is. So as they try to do their own thing, in the end, things just are not working. And Sunny here is like stressed out. She's stressed out that, ah, whatever I'm doing here is not working. Ah, uh, uh, what, what do I do? What do I do? And she takes her time and kind of saves a picture of her dad, her and her dad, because it was about to fall onto the ground. So she goes into her room, or the room, and asks her, asks her dad, or talks to the picture of her dad, and saying, if you're here, you know what to do. And with her revelation, Silver, you, you said you enjoyed this part, right? So what, what, how would you word it? Well, looking at her dad, she remembers his emphasis on friendship. She has a moment of self-reflection about what needs to be done. And it's not about just simply getting everyone together physically. It's about uniting their purpose. And so it's, it's nice that she is just sitting down, finding a quiet spot for a moment and having that moment's introspection before going back to rejoin the group and direct them. Whereas G4 would usually require someone to sort of tell them what they need to do or get them to shake up. Here, it's a moment of introspection, which I appreciate. It's like you say, I'm still more a G4 fan than G5, but there are some things that G5 can do well. And that includes having them find a solution and not making the audience just scream at this at the TV or computer, you know. Unite them! Oh, that's so true. That's so true. And yeah, in G four, have we seen this problem done in G four before? I think we have, right? I think it was. Uh, I forget what the title of the episode was, but it was the episode where uh, the Legion of Doom basically infiltrates Kent a lot to steal the book on how to use Grogar's bell. And they do all the shenanigans to make the celebration fall apart. Oh, I was thinking of Castle Sweet Castle, where they try to oh, customize Twilight's yeah. new home. Oh, that's the, yeah, that's the closest one. And similar, similar feel, but that's done better, but because it's longer, so it had a lot of time to work with. Yeah. So, as Sunny comes out of the her room, she tells the ponies, "Yo, ponies." Stop whatever you're doing. I like the energy. I like your enthusiasm, but we can do random stuff. Uh, take a look, see at the place what, and what you've done. What we need here is focus and a sense of direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to direct you all to do stuff and let's go. Which kind of works, I guess. Oh, wait, I remember another one. Winter wrap up. Similar, I think. Wasn't that also? A mm, little bit. Lack of coordination between parties. Yeah, season one, a classic, but mostly remembered for the song. But anywho, um, as Sunny just states out, okay, gang, um, let's do this, but with more, with unity and direction. So they have a montage of them doing stuff and how to do, and just, and just doing it with a sense of purpose and direction. And the place is awesome after that it looks great it looks awesome and not much glitter so yay and they take a picture representing that they've done good and 
they they pat themselves in the back and says, "Wow, the place looks awesome." And episode end. After the crab tries to ruin the foundation again, don't know what that thing has against buildings. A building kills its parents. Ah. Or because he doesn't he doesn't have one of his own, like his cousin. Or maybe he just uh, woke up on the wrong side of the shell and is a bit crappy. Ah! Shell? He's he's not that kind of crab. You sure he's that? He's acting a bit shellfish. Uh, let's see if I can do that. Ah, no, it's not recorded. <laughs> oh well. Anywho, um, like I was saying, and carrying on. Episode ends. So, final thoughts on this one. I'm gonna go for Jacob. Uh, Jacob, what do you think, man? Well, I do like the song, honestly. It is catchy, even if I'm not well the sort of that likes this modern ver- uh, modern songs. <laughs> Although, considering the title is Work, 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 you'd think that it was uh, being chanted by uh, peons. <laughs> uh, work, work. At least it's not the same as the other type of uh, song. Oh? You don't know what I'm talking about? Uh, no, I don't. Where there's a way, <laughs> there's a way. Where there's a way, there's a way. Where there's a whip, we don't wanna go to work today. <laughs> but the Lord of the Lash says, "Nay, nay, nay." <laughs> oh, what's it from? That's from Lord of the Rings: The Return of the King, the animated movie. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> you are just thinking it's when they're being marched over to the Black Gate. But honestly, the the lyrics are such that you might as well think that uh, it's being sung sung by the orc laborers who are being controlled by the chaos uh, dwarves in Warhammer Fantasy. That all, Jacob? Yeah, that's all right. Silver, about you, my friend. Well, let's see here. I I too really enjoy the song. I mean, that's the the main focus of this episode and the main draw. The thing is that. The I feel like it made the cast a little too, like I said earlier, spastic. Zip will do three lines of paint and then somehow call it done. And we're like, or Izzy's just throwing paint at a wall and then glitter everywhere. So I feel like maybe that's a bit overdone. Well, I mean, in Zip's case, it's this logical because she realized that she was painting the wall with glue instead of paint. <laughs> Since a bird got stuck in it. What I find funny, though, is that last episode with the Sisters Take Flight, uh, Hitch, Sonny, and Izzy were all watching from the Bright House. And I had to I had to go back and forth on the frames for a little bit to try and reconcile, well, the Bright House is standing in that episode. What are they doing in this episode? Oh, okay. The outer structure was completed off screen. It's all the interior design now. I was thinking about that one too, and I came up with the theory of they're probably watching it in Hitch's house. No? Nope, they're watching it in the Bright House. Yeah, it shows the lighthouse. So probably the Bright House is just... um. Well, you, you still can have a building done, but it's not fully renovated inside kind of situation. Yeah, the interior is not finished because you can see the all the stuff that's laying about. Mm, all right. Makes sense. Yeah. Well, hang on. One, one thing we didn't cover with Sister Stake Flight is Izzy's recollection of how she left uh, Bridalwood. Oh, yeah. I purposely left that one out. I don't know why. <laughs> because it's so mean. I mean, yes, everyone should be cheering Izzy. She helped get bring magic back. She helped lift them out of a dark age. And does anyone show up? No, it's just one little kazoo cult. <laughs> God bless you, little kazoo cult. With crossed eyes. <laughs> hey, that can be a thing. But I, I think, like, um, Izzy's recollection could just be her not really... The, un, the, the unreliable narrator kind of deal. But still, unicorns are jerks. But are they? Yes! But are they really? Really, yes. Uh, yes. No no comment here from uh, of Pony OC. And then in this episode, just the spastic nature is probably the biggest turnoff. It'd be one thing if, like, Zip set up all the glue and then went to do something else, but the, but the glue dried before they could apply the wallpaper. 
that's something I could see happening and work better than just, oh, she drew three lines of glue in a completely random triangle. The show made all the characters dumb. But to be honest, they're not that <clears throat> uncoordinated, right? Like, I feel like everybody's awesome in their own way. Well, I mean, come on, the main six were had their uncoordinated moments, too. True, but at the same time, too, it's not to this level of detriment, right? Or I'm just sugarcoating or have roasted mm. doggles on. No, I mean, like, like I say, Castle Sweet Castle, they're Castle Sweet Castle, they're they're throwing dirt on the floor. That's a- oh. or at least Applejack is. Oh, that, oh, man, talking about Applejack, that, that reminds me of what you mentioned, Silver. They had they just have to dumb down one person just so that they look bad. Man, poor Applejack. She always get the better end of the stick. But anyway, um, as for me, I, I, I enjoy the song. The song was sketchy. I, I do like the uh, moment that Sunny had with uh, the picture of her father. So that's awesome. And I don't know. Um, the rest of it was okay. It was pretty mid. On a scale of 1 to 10, I would say that this episode was a low 5. Not high 5, but low 5. It, it 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 was okay. Moments like the father, uh, moments like Sunny and the picture of her father and this song kind of saved it from being a four. So anyway, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at thematuregmail.com. Uh, you can also reach us on X. Oh man, I still miss Twitter, man. Twitter, Twitter sounds just awesome. Yeah, I'm not going to call it that. Yeah, it's Twitter. So, um, you can reach me, uh, you can reach the show at the NBS Show, and you can reach me at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? On uh, Twitter, YouTube, and DeviantArt under MLP Silver Quill. Uh, you can also do a search for Silver Quill after the fact. Also, I do weekday puns. And you can find links to my Patreon and Kofi to support after the fact uh, on my YouTube channel. Awesome, awesome. Go do so. Uh, did you mention about your live stream every quote unquote Friday? Well, they've been a bit sporadic lately because, well, life has been getting in the way. But yes, every Friday I do host an art stream where I, a uh, fulfillment Friday where I try to make good on Patreon rewards for people. Yeah, um, you can also, like recently, Silver did um, ed- editing on the tribute for JDF. And it's a good watch. Like, you guys should just check it out. Jacob, what about you, my friend? Where can the good people find you? Uh, you can find me on the DeviantArt under the username Yakafon Torkel, under the Twitter username Tales of the Ashes. If you're interested in reading the story Tomorrow Rising, you can find it on filmfiction.net. And if you're interested in reading an original story featuring anthropomorphic animals in a dual fantasy setting called Tales of the Ashes, you can find it on the talesoftheashes.com. Go do so, guys, because they're awesome. And also, please subscribe and read us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon. Uh, links are into the sh- uh, in the show notes. Yay! If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash MBS show. With every support, we'll get you a week's early access to review discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Lucky Knight, Jacob, Master Flag. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So, anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil Vaquil. I'm Yaka. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the S Show. See ya. Adios. Bye bye. So, when we move in together, right, I'm gonna make a policy where we need to share everything. Nope. What do you mean, no? Silver, join me on this. Uh, no, I never agreed to move in. I've got a whole ocean in between us. But sharing is caring! Well then call me apathetic.